it's me. So I was thinking about doing another video about achalasia and I asked you to help me out and asking some questions for me because I know I had a lot of questions when I was going through it, so here we go. Uh, the first question I have is, what was the biggest lifestyle change I had to face since being diagnosed? Um, eating, eating has been a big lifestyle change. I still, I still eat a lot of things that I was told I shouldn't, but that's just how life is. But there are a lot of things I avoid. Avoid. I try to not drink as much soda. I try to just stay away from really from a lot of fried foods because it causes heartburn. I have to take an omeprazole every day. That's been a really big life-changing thing is relying on the on those medicine pills to make sure I'm not going to die from acid reflux. So that's been a big lifestyle change is relying on those to just have me have a healthy normal life. Uh, the next question I have is how has having a rare disease impacted your relationship with my friends, family, co-workers, etc.? Interesting. It hasn't really affected my relationships at all. I mean, there's a lot of uh, things that I have to tell people. I mean, the people who were with me when I was sick and I was diagnosed, they know exactly what I went through. And they have a really good idea of what I've gone through and how it's a part of me. But people I'm just barely meeting who never met me when I was diagnosed or people who worked around me before my surgery, they have no idea what it really is. And when I explain it, it's kind of like their eyes glaze over and they're just like, oh, okay. It's a normal reaction I get. But, yeah, it hasn't really affected my relationships at all. I just kind of like... When I meet new people, they don't really know what it is or understand what I've gone through. And that's sort of a challenge, but it's not that bad. Uh, the next question I have is, since my diagnosis, how has this changed your view on the world, life, and, a, and yourself as a human? This achalasia has completely changed my life. It has completely changed how I see my life and how I view life as to be lived. It's it's humbling to have something put on you like that, just a disease that doesn't have a cure, that causes large amounts of pain, that completely changes your life. It's just, you go through so many emotions. You go through sorrow, you go through pain, you go through anger, you go through sadness, you go through everything. There's just no way to really describe it to anyone until you've been diagnosed with something that you have absolutely no control over you just don't really know what it's going to be like I know personally I was angry I was angry at everything and if you've seen my first video you know that I've overcome that anger but I was just angry at everything I was angry at the world and I, I just wanted to blame someone something for do you know the biggest question I always asked that no one could really answer is why me and I think that's what anyone ever really asks themselves when something bad happens to them is why me the answer to that is that why not you you are given something that yeah it's a struggle and it's hard to go through but take the bull by the horns and just ride with it because if you let it control your life then you're not really living you're letting the disease live the life for you not necessarily you living your life. The disease is just part of you now. There's no reason why you should change your life for it. I mean, yeah, change it a little bit so you don't die, but there's just no reason why you should let some tragedy completely change the way you view your life and how you want to live it because that's not what life is about. It's about living, not kind of living, I guess. Uh, the next question I have is, before I was diagnosed, how did you cope, how did I cope, and what were my feelings when you would get sick? I was really confused before I got diagnosed. I had no idea what was going on with my body. I had no idea if it was normal. So I kept it to myself. I was just like, okay, maybe I just need to eat sore, but it hurts. It hurt right here. I could just feel this pressure in my chest. I had no way to explain it and only really one other person knew what I was going through and it was the guy I was dating at the time since we were around each other all the time but I didn't tell my mom, I didn't seek out a doctor until I was to the point where I was literally throwing up everything I ate. 
even drinking and that was something I regret is something I tell everyone when they feel like something's going wrong you know your body better than anyone else so if you feel like something's wrong no matter the what the cost go see a doctor go see a medical professional don't let it sit until it's you know too late because there could be a solution for you before that I mean in my case there really wasn't it was just gonna get worse and worse until I got surgery but I wish I had sought out help sooner instead of just ignoring the problem. When I did find out when I, what I was diagnosed with, when I did find out I had achalasia, I had a hard time coping with it. I had an extremely hard time. I would just lay in my bed at night just hoping, praying, wishing that my life would end. It was so extremely painful. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't bear the thought that I was slowly withering away and no matter how badly I wanted to eat, no matter how much my body willed me to do my basic instinct to survive was to eat food, I couldn't. Disease would not let me and that it bothered me, it bothered me a lot that my will to survive and my will to live was being blocked because I couldn't do something because my one part of my body just wasn't functioning like the rest of it and that was hard to cope with. It was very hard and I would sleep a lot. Sleeping was my escape. Sleeping was kind of my drug. If I was sad or miserable, I would go to sleep. And I would sleep for hours and hours and hours at a time. I would I would sleep at home. I would sleep in class. I would sleep at work if I got the chance when I was still working and it was just it was miserable. It was really miserable. And when I couldn't sleep, another way I learned to cope with it was to shop because if I was shopping, I wasn't thinking about being sick. I was thinking about what I could buy. And that became an issue as well. Sleeping and shopping became my coping mechanisms because sleeping made me happy and shopping made me happy. Uh, maybe this is a question I should have answered at the beginning, but could you give me an overview of what achalasia is? Is it genetic? Do they know what causes it? Typically what achalasia is, is an esophagus disorder, disease, where the lower esophageal sphincter, I'll stand up, it's about right here on your body, my chair just fell, right here on your body, the esophagus part that connects right here and your stomach completely like just closes up. So food trying to get down doesn't. It gets stuck right here and usually causes regurgitation to come back up. So that's that's a problem with achalasia is that uh, the part that connects your stomach and your esophagus just stops working. There's no way to like prevent it. It's not genetic as far as uh, medical professionals are concerned. Uh, they don't know why the nerves in that region shut down or choose to shut down or why the cells stop knowing what to do when food is sent down to the stomach. It's a very rare disease. About one out of 100,000 people are affected by it every year. And there have been a few theories. There's a parasite in Brazil that you can get, but I've never been to Brazil and I've never eaten fruit from Brazil. So that was kind of out. Another thing is that if, like last year or two years ago, a drug called Accutane was taken off the market for causing gastrointestinal diseases. Just so happened when I was 14, I was on Accutane and I got off of it around when I was 16 and that's when I got diagnosed. That's when I started having issues. It was about right after I came off of Accutane. And that's another that's another theory, I guess, is what's what causes it. But um, I'll never really know. There's no way to really tell if, that's, if Accutane did that to me or if I was just that one out of 100,000 people that just happened to get it. I'll never know the answer and no one probably ever will and as much as it used to bother me, it doesn't bother me anymore. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with who I am w with achalasia. Uh, it's part of who I am. I wouldn't, if I could go back in time and somehow prevent myself from getting it, I wouldn't. It's shaped me into this person that I, I love this person that I am, the strength that I've acquired from it, and there's nothing I would ever, ever change about that. So yeah, happy who I am. If you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to message me, whoever you are, if you're just curious, if you have it, if you've just been diagnosed, if you're about to get a heller myotomy, just anything. Please don't hesitate to ask. I know I would have, I would have killed to have someone 
when I was really sick to talk to, just to talk to, to feel like I wasn't so alone. You're not alone. Go go to the Accolation Awareness uh, group on Facebook. Go Google it. Go find people. Go talk to them. Talk to me because I want you to not feel alone. I want you to be okay because you're going to be okay. It's going to get better. You're going to be okay. It's just going to suck. I'm not going to lie to you about that. It's going to suck. But you're going to survive it because that's what that's what you do. That's what we do as humans is that we survive no matter how horrible a tragedy is, no matter how hard it is, we push through because that's what we have to do and you can do it. I believe in you no matter what. Even if you, if you don't have accolades, even if you're having just a bad day, even if things are just being tough, even if life things in your life are going to shit and you have no idea what to do, you're going to be okay. I promise you're going to be okay. And that's really my biggest life advice I can ever give and what I could tell anyone on this planet is that you're going to be okay. Whether, no matter what. And if I could, if I could just go up to every person in the world and personally tell them that, I would. Because it's true. You're going to be okay. Alright, I'm going to go. But thanks so much for listening and please don't hesitate to talk to me. I am perfectly open to answering any other questions you may have. Thanks. Bye.